I think when an artist starts a new painting, they're actually giving birth to a third person. In a way, the painting is the offspring between the subject and the artist. Descendants that will live long after both the artist and the subject are gone. I think about this sometimes when I go to museums and I see these little time capsules hanging on the wall. I know both the artist and the subject are most likely gone, but the evidence of their connection is hanging right in front of me and has taken on a life of its own. My grandfather owned and operated a small dirt floor trading post near Star Lake, New Mexico. He actually spoke fluent Navajo and would trade with many of the tribes in the Star Lake region. They loved and respected him. Of course, I wasn't around back then, but our family always had items around the house such as Navajo rugs and kachina dolls to remind us of granddad's connection with the Native Americans. Return to Star Lake was a way for me to explore that a bit further. I've been revisiting many of the native sites near Star Lake and throughout the Southwest, interviewing with native leaders from various tribes and collecting stories and archive photos. And these have been driving my canvas narratives. I'd say these exchanges have been a pivotal influence in this new body of work. Fire itself is alive. We pray to it because it's just like us. It has to have oxygen to exist. Cut off the oxygen, it dies, just like us. So they say it's her tears that run off the falls. And it's bleeding heart, his bleeding heart that's in the cave. Oftentimes for me, seemingly unrelated experiences merge together and evolve into one piece. I suppose as an artist that's the most interesting and most often challenging part. Weaving together these elements into one narrative. Back in the old days, when you reached a certain age, you uh, were pretty much counted on to go on a vision quest. It was a transition from childhood to manhood. But nowadays, uh, we use it to help us to get closer to the Creator. Some of the paintings are closer to a loose abstraction of how I remember a place. Such as the fall aspens at my Uncle Roger's ranch near Los Alamos. I spent summers there as a kid, and I suppose these paintings reflect more how they felt rather than how they actually were. Some of the other paintings illustrate regional narratives from a time long before I was even around. Perhaps things my granddad might have seen. The raw, skeletal beauty of the Southwest never ceases to amaze me. I mean, just look at this place. And it's clear that I'm not alone in thinking this. I look to painters like Maynard Dixon and pretty much all of the early Taos artists. I love the way they celebrated the West. 
My granddad's west. I don't fool myself into thinking I'll ever experience the West like Grandpa knew it. I just wanted to walk a mile or two in his shoes. Now the old family trading post is nothing more than a few crumbled adobe foundation walls and dust. The desert took it all back. I would say these paintings are my way of going back there.